Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the United States Army Special Operations Command Memorial Ceremony. Remembrance of the extraordinary Special Operations soldiers who, over the past years, gave their very lives in courageous service to our nation. The U.S. Army Special Operation Forces have been involved in virtually all U.S. conflicts since World War II, performing direct action and unconventional warfare missions, as well as conducting civil affairs and psychological operations. They have repeatedly performed some of the most dangerous and important missions to ensure our victories and to help set nations free. This USASAC Memorial Plaza was created to serve as a fitting location for honoring and recognizing events of historic importance and capturing the extraordinary successes of our Special Operations soldiers. This Memorial Plaza and the adjacent expanse of the Major Richard Dick Meadows Field serves as a site of our USASOC ceremonies, where organizations and missions pass from one leader to another, and where we marshal the magnificent bronze persona that reminds us all of who they were and what they had to do. The fields of stone to your front is crafted of 34 heralding stones memorializing our units, honoring our soldiers, and forever capturing their uncommon service. This memorial plaza is further defined by our flag, whose splendor serves and is served by us all. And finally, our plaza's periphery is defined by our wall, our memorial wall of honor, erected with great reverence, steadfastly examples of special soldiers and unique accomplishments in military display. As far as eastern end of Meadowsfield behind you, is a statue placed by Mr. Ross Perot in remembrance of this accomplished Army Special Operations warrior and leader, Major Richard Dick Meadows. The statue to your front is the first memorial in this country to, to honor American soldiers killed in action during the Vietnam War. The Special Warfare Memorial statue, a statue serving as a long lasting memorial for our fallen Special Operations soldiers. The host for today's ceremony is the commander of the United States Army Special Operations Command, Lieutenant General John Braga. The music for today's ceremony is being provided by Sergeant First Class Amelia Alston, singing our national anthem, and Mr. Doug Elwell, our regimental piper. We extend a very special and heartfelt welcome to our most honored Gold Star families and to all our guests those here with us today and those attending virtually, thank you for joining us as we pay tribute to our fallen heroes. Appearing before you are elements representing the United States Army Special Operations Commands, component subordinate commands, and subordinate units. From left to right, they are the 1st Special Forces Command Airborne, the United States Army John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Center and School, the United States Army Special Operations Aviation Command, and the 75th Ranger Regiment. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is the United States Army Special Operations Command's Chief of Staff, Colonel John Jason Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the rendering of honors and remain standing for the singing of our national anthem and the invocation presented by Command Chaplain, Chaplain Colonel David Bolas. <laughs> the 
Good morning. I invite you to pray with me. Almighty God, this is hallowed ground, and we know you are with us now. Thank you for your holy presence, and help us to remember and honor our fallen brothers and sisters with reverence and heartfelt appreciation. You taught us that there is no love greater than the one that gives its life for another. And these honored fallen offered the most sacred gift they possessed, life itself. We are indebted to those who made the ultimate sacrifice for freedom. May we remember them so that their lives deeply strengthen us today for the challenges of tomorrow. Because a nation that forgets its heroes will itself be forgotten. We also pray for our Gold Star families. They have walked a road which was not of their choice. One marked with grief and loss, few will ever know. Yet because of it, they possess resources of resilience, love, and a perspective that we need to know. Thank you for them, for walking with them and their continued connection with us. And may this time with their soft family be one of peace and comfort. Lord, I ask that you bless this ceremony now with your presence and strengthen us to protect our nation without fear, without fail, and without equal. I ask these things in your great and mighty name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to present the Commanding General of the United States Army Special Operations Command, Lieutenant General John Braga. Well, I don't know if that was like a concert or church with Amelia. A little bit of both there. That was fantastic. We didn't get that in the rehearsal. That was a, an amazing rendition of the National Anthem. Can I get one more round of applause for Amelia? That was fantastic. Wow. So welcome, everyone. Uh, Chaplain, great job, too, with the weather. Extra prayer there. We, we did a little bit earlier this year, so it wouldn't be so hot, and we didn't know it was going to be this temperate, so uh, we were blessed with that for sure. So thanks for getting up early, starting a little bit earlier this year for those who have been here before. But on behalf of the 36,000 men and women of the United States Army Special Operations Command, it really is an honor. It's an honor for me and the rest of the command team here, Joanne Naum and Bob Davis, uh, and the rest of the leaders here to welcome you here to back to USASOC. Thanks for being here on this solemn but important day when we remember our 1,242 names on this wall, heroes who have fallen in support of this great nation. I'm especially pleased to welcome our most honored guests, our Special Operations Gold Star family members. Families in attendance today, I'm going to read them off, and I'm sure you know, some might have snuck in and, and not hit the RSVP, and some are virtual, but uh, we're pleased and honored to have uh, the family members of the following. Staff Sergeant Ryan Knaus, Sergeant First Class Michael Tully, Sergeant First Class William Brown, Sergeant First Class Michael Cathcart, Staff Sergeant Alex Conrad, Captain Daniel Eggers, Sergeant First Class J.W. Johnson, Sergeant LaDavid Johnson, Staff Sergeant Logan Melgar, Specialist John Pelham, Sergeant First Class Javi Jaguar Gutierrez, Staff Sergeant Adam Thomas, Staff Sergeant Liam Nevins, Captain Ronald Luce Jr., Sergeant Kashif Mehman, Sergeant First Class Matthew Sluss Tiller, Staff Sergeant Mar Mark Stetz Jr., Captain Kyle Comfort, Sergeant Timothy Conaway, Sergeant First Class Aaron Grider, Sergeant First Class Richard Harmer, CW2 Scott Dyer, Sergeant First Class Eric Iman, CW2 Staley Harriman, Mass Sergeant David Hurt, Staff Sergeant Justin Marquez, Sergeant First Class Justin Monsky, Sergeant First Class Tung Nguyen, Sergeant First Class Roberto Skelt, Warrant Officer One Sean Thomas, Mass Sergeant Gregory Trent, Staff Sergeant Michael Wright, and Master Sergeant Anthony Yost, 
and I truly apologize if I missed anyone who, who, who got here and, and, and are here present today or virtually that we just missed you on the RSVP, but know that we're in awe of your strength and truly grateful for all of you being here today and all that you have given. Please join me in a round of applause for our Gold Star family members. I'd also like to welcome some of our, our VIPs here today, Mayor Anthony Kia, the Mayor of Spring Lake. Uh, we have Misty Malson from the Special Operations Warrior Foundation. Thank you for both for being here. Current and former General Officers, Command Sergeant Majors, Command Chief Warrant Officers, thanks so much for uh, starting your day with us, solemn day. So today marks a very special day of the year where we, we pause. We pause to reflect on our legacy and really to commemorate those upon whom it is built. We are here to celebrate their memory, to remember their impact, and to honor their sacrifice of the past and the present. We're not the only here, we're not only here for the fallen warriors who gave their lives for us, but we're also here for their families, those who I just read off, who have been left with a hole in their heart for their loved one. And we are here for our soldiers who continue to volunteer to serve in defense of our democracy. I'm really thankful, extremely thankful, I can't even put it into words how thankful I am that we do not have to name, add a name to this memorial wall this year. This is the longest period of time we have experienced without losing an RSOF soldier in combat since September 1st, or excuse me, September 11th, 2001. The sacrifice given by our forces since that day truly have few parallels in history. 22 years ago, we paid an immeasurable cost and found ourselves as a nation at war. Since that foreboding day, we faced the death of 377 men and women of Army Special Operations whose names are on this wall. Many of the family members are here today, and they're interwoven into that history, our history, a history that you didn't desire to or intend to be part of for their family members, which is why it's so important that as an organization, we do not forget our collective history. We must remain vigilant in the defense of our nation. We owe this to our fallen soldiers who gave their lives standing guard over our freedom. We owe this to our formation, which has endured hardships beyond what most can comprehend. And we owe this to our families who have sacrificed beside us every day. No one, no one carries a heavier burden than the spouses, the children, siblings, parents, grandparents of our Gold Star family members. Thank you for sharing today and yesterday with us. We are truly honored and privileged that you spent so much time with us. I mean, yesterday was an absolute fantastic day for me personally, starting it off with our extended family. And I, when I mean family, I want to talk about it as family and, and hopefully, uh, the Gold Star family member is okay with me sharing some of my glimpses of, into catching up with them. Now, I, I have no social media, so it is truly like an old school Thanksgiving. When you, when you meet people, you get caught up. You didn't know, like, oh, I didn't know you, you did this, you did that. It's truly catching up. Um, and some I met for the first time, but some it wasn't. It was uh, seeing old family members come back and catch up. And, and, and like all families, it's, it's special. Uh, you know, I started off uh, yesterday morning having a great conversation with Victoria Nevins, lost her son, Staff Sergeant Liam Nevins. The mom of the 519th, uh, who, who loves art, and had a great conversation. I said, what, what was your last picture? What's the picture when you think of your son? What is that picture in your head? What does it look like? Um, and, and it varied, and it was, it was really interesting, almost like he was frozen in time, but now she's back to her love of art. And I asked her if she had ever painted that picture of her son. I said, not yet, and was thinking about that mural, but I, I hope you paint that picture, and I hope to see it someday. Had a great conversation with Ellen Comfort, who lost her son, Captain Kyle Comfort, and she, it really struck to me the great conversation I had with her right in front of this wall, and then had a great conversation again last night with her. And man, she is, she is an adventurous, true to heart, and where she found solace was uh, doing things that her son liked, even if it meant it was things she didn't like, right? Like skiing, I'm not sure where Miss Ellen's sitting right now. Um, oh, there you go. Again, your, your quote was, how, how the heck does it, someone from Alabama end up liking skiing, my son? But you tried it, you didn't like it, but you tried it, that was fantastic. Uh, 
I didn't know about Gold Star Peak up in Alaska uh, until I talked to her. It was absolutely fantastic. But if anyone can find solace in that, that really resonate, resonated with me of connecting with your, your lost loved one, of, of trying things um, that he or she liked. Um, had a great conversation with uh, Colonel Rebecca Eb, uh, Eggers and son Billy, who just graduated from the Citadel. Um, and talk about the strength of the family. My wife, uh, Melanie, and I talk about all the time the importance of really having a family type culture and atmosphere of your military organization because you're going you're gonna to need them. You're going you're gonna to need to lean on them and, and wrap your arms around them and cry with them and support them in times of need. And she was doing just that, uh, supporting a previous loss of life here of CW3 Bruce Price and helping out with the, the food network and dropping off just some food to help comfort through those trying times of the immediate loss of your loved one. And little did she know, two weeks later, she'd be having some of those same people on her doorstep delivering food to her and her young sons. Um, had the same conversation with Billy uh, about what memory to have of your, of your dad. He was so young, so young when, when lost her dad, but he, he did have a favorite picture of him with his foot on a rock and, and holding a, holding a holding a rifle up in the, in the highlands of, uh, I believe, Afghanistan. But I've treasured that conversation and look forward to uh, staying in touch. Great, great conversation last night where Will and Candace Thomas celebrated their 43rd anniversary. Can you get a round of applause for that? Fellow family members, we had an anniversary last night. Where are they sitting? I'm going blind. There we go, right over there. How was Luigi's last night? Thumbs up? Okay. Uh, but so cool you went there because that's where you went. Uh, after uh, Adam graduated the Q course. So that, that is a fantastic uh, memory there. Um, another great conversation with, with Dave and Chris Roberts, who lost uh, William Brown, uh, excuse me, lost their son and, and, and uh, started a scholarship in, in his name uh, to help remember. Um, Paula Knaus. Had a great conversation again, starting up her own nonprofit to make sure uh, the memory of Ryan is, is remembered um, and given back to her family here and trying to help uh, those who are joining the military uh, and starting their journey uh, and honoring Ryan moving forward. Great catching up with the Pelhams who are coming up on the 10th anniversary of their, the loss of their son, John. Uh, we had a great discussion about next year's commemorative coin of, uh, that, that they're thinking about designing already, um, which is, uh, it, it, I always treasure when I, when I look at it. It was a great picture um, of John on this year's coin. Now, uh, Commander Richard Johnson, where are you sitting? Where are you, where are you hiding? There we go. Probably the bravest who flew up from Miami had turbulence like turbulence didn't ever, right? <laughs> are you contemplating driving back now, vice flying back? It was that bad of a flight up. Look at her, she's laughing. What a great laugh, right? Like I said, it's like the Thanksgiving turkey day during you catch up. You got that loudest aunt or uncle who's like just has the best laugh. She's got the best smile. Uh, it was great, great scene and catching up with you. Um, Mark and Nancy Stetz, uh, so good. It usually has the best tie, right? Uh, I'm not sure where the Stetz uh, ended up sitting, which side they were. Always comes with a tie, great, fantastic tie. Navy vet, uh, there we go, right back there. But as family does, wanted to dress comfortable last night and dress comfortable this morning. So we're real glad that you felt that comfortable to be here with your family and, uh, and, and be relaxed. I did miss the tie, but uh, uh, it's great, great, to, great to see you again. And there were so many more conversations. I only wish there was more and more time, but I look forward to more in the, in the future. But I, I was amazed at how many of you, the Gold Star families, had similar comments about how it felt to see a uh, couple things, how emotional it was to see your loved one's name on the wall. And some had, had been just last year, and some it had been over 10 years, so you had been back here. Um, but several of you had commented on that. And many, many also remarked about how it felt like family to be around family. Uh, and that makes us feel good, because that's the promise that we hope to endear to never forget that you feel like family when you come back. And that's the challenge to those in this formation, the youngest soldier here that carry that on. So 10 years from now, that feeling is the same. You're coming back to family. And that family's always there through thick and thin. You know, families talk, right? You come back for Thanksgiving, they talk. Um, but they also, they also say a lot without saying anything at all. 
because you're family. You can read the facial expression. You can feel the heartache. You can feel the weight on someone's soldiers, uh, shoulders. But you also can feel it when they're relaxed around family. And a lot of you comment on that and how good it was to just rejoice in your loved one's memories. Um, and that's important because around families, you're supposed to be able to let your guard down. And like families, all families, you might fight, but you never stop loving. And no matter what, you'll always be families to us. So for our families, we come together this year as we do every year in this most hallowed place of hope and patriotism. It is here at this memorial wall where we can touch their names and remember their stories. And when each name is added, this memorial wall is forever changed, much like the permanent inscription you have been left with a lifelong mark by the loss of your loved one. I know that when you feel the shape of their name, your heart aches, and while we can't fill that void, we hope that you feel comfort in knowing that your loved one matters. They matter to the partners to our left and right, fighting terrorists in the places like the Philippines, Syria, and Iraq. It's because of their dedication that those same terrorists are, are unable to attack the homeland. They matter to the Ukrainian citizens who need assistance standing up for freedom against occupying powers. It is because of their perseverance that we have strength in our alliances. They matter in generational relationships where our soft professional soldiers are nurturing the American reputation. And it's because of their compassion and entrustment that we can arrive in times of crisis and have an immediate connection from which to start. They matter in the countries where RSOF operates, working closely with partners against foes, promoting stability and defending against threats around the world. Their bravery and courage kept our enemies at bay and our homeland safe. They led the way. They freed the oppressed. They never quit. They matter to our nation. Your loved ones are forever enshrined on this sacred wall beside me. But it's not only today that we remember and celebrate them, and I really want you to know that. I really want you to know that. Every day, soldiers walk to work with their fallen teammates in their minds. Through memorials just like this one, across stones like the ones you see here, we see their pictures, we read their stories on our video memorial wall at our building's entrance. We hold meetings with them in conference rooms bearing their name. We eat with them in defects across every installation. We celebrate with them on, in memorial halls. We exercise with them during named workouts after their names, telling their stories, showing their pictures, and giving them our sweat and tears. RSOF has also built remembrance into our organizational structure. Understanding the legacy of our teammates is essential to accomplishing this mission. Whether it's in the 75th Ranger Regiment, who instills into the memory of the newest Rangers coming in about their former Rangers who paved the way before them, it's baked into every organization that you see represented across this field. Our soft teams know they're built in the legacy of those before them. We carry with them, we carry them with us in personal ways too. Bracelets hidden under our sleeves or carved with their names. Tattoos covered with clothing reminds us of our favorite moment. And some of, literally some of our children take their names, keeping our connection to them close to our hearts. General George Patton Jr. said, the soldier is the army, and no army is better than its soldiers. It is because of our soldiers that I have confidence in our army, and these soldiers are supported by their loving families. It is the resilient spirit and bravery in our formation that has kept our army strong. It is the dedication and sacrifice shown by the men and women on this wall that has kept our nation safe. And it's because of the commitment and strength of our families that we can continue. That is how I know the legacy of this great nation will endure. So our country has emerged from two world wars, the long struggle, the Cold War, the global war on terror, and the strongest, we're the strongest military in the world. Now we're being tested again by the reemergence of nation states who threaten our way of life. The world today is far from peaceful. The largest land war since World War II is raging on the European continent. Democracy is under threat, and, over three, and, and our 3,000 currently deployed soldiers remain in harm's way, supporting our friends and allies, and keeping threats far from our shores. When given the Gettysburg Address, President Lincoln said, it is for us, the living, the living, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work 
which they who fought have thus far so nobly advanced. The homeland remains safe because of the spirit and commitment of our Army Special Operations Forces. So I challenge each and every soldier here today, a true challenge, everyone here, talk to the Gold Star family members in attendance, hear their stories of their loved ones firsthand. Those of us who personally knew the fallen soldiers on this wall will not live forever. It is our responsibility to ensure their memory is carried on through future generations. Let the living breathe the message of the fallen. Honor them by telling their story and remembering them. And so do our Gold Star family members. I request that you use today to share those stories of your heroes like you did last night and yesterday morning because you're with family. Find a soldier here today and share with them your loved one's favorite joke or a story about them. We want to hear it and it helps keep their memory alive. Those who've lost, those we've lost will, will live on through families who love them, friends who miss them, and teammates who will never forget them. Your loved ones truly live, truly lived our Army soft promise. It's written on the wall behind me up here and etched in glass, but they protected the nation without fear, without fail, and without equal. They set the example for us what it means to stand up for what you believe in, what it means to sacrifice for a greater purpose, and what, what it means to be truly dedicated to a cause. We can only thank you, their families, friends, brothers, and sisters for shaping them into the people they were. I want to thank you all for coming today. May God bless and comfort our Gold Star family members. May you protect our soldiers serving across the world. And may God bless the United States of America without fear, without fail, without equal, sine pari. Originally, a monument to the Special Forces soldiers killed in Vietnam, the memorial wall lists 799 names of Army Special Operations soldiers who died serving in Vietnam including eight Special Forces Medal of Honor recipients from that war. Outside of Vietnam, our Special Operations soldiers have been and continue to be sent around the world many times over to help protect the freedoms of our great nation and to liberate those who are oppressed. Their extraordinary accomplishments attest to the singular professionalism these men and women possessed. From the Army Special Forces Operations Community, some of us, our very best, have been killed in operations in places like the Korean War, where six of our Special Operations soldiers were killed, Urgent Fury in Grenada, where nine more of our Special Operations soldiers were killed, Just Cause in Panama, seven more. Desert Shield, Desert Storm in Southwest Asia, where we lost eight more highly valued lives. Provide comfort in Northern Iraq. Three were killed aboard a helicopter. Restore hope in Somalia. 19 killed, including two more Medal of Honor recipients. Uphold democracy in Haiti. One killed while manning a traffic control point. In Latin America, six more. In Asia, the Philippines, one assassinated by terrorists. A soldier with some 20 years earlier had escaped after five years as a Vietnam POW. In the Middle East, one more killed. Operation Joint Guardian in Kosovo, one killed in action. In service to our nation, six operational deaths, including one killed in the Pentagon on 9-11, another aboard a Pan Am flight over Lockerbie, Scotland, and four others killed on the African continent. Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan, 232 deaths fighting the global war on terrorism. Operation Iraqi Freedom, where we lost another 97 members of the Saw family. 
Operation Inherent Resolve in Iraq and Syria. Eight killed. And Operation Freedom Sentinel in Afghanistan. 33 killed. The names of our recent Special Operations soldiers who made the ultimate sacrifice were added to this wall among their brethren of proud and most honored warriors. Much of the history of today's Army Special Operations Forces resides within these stones upon the countenance of these powerful bronze warrior statues on this memorial wall of honor. The laying of a reef is a time-honored tradition. In the ancient societies of the Egyptians, Chinese, and Hebrews, the evergreens of the reef were symbols of continuance of life, and the shape of the reef is that of a circle as a symbol of immortality. Representing the 1st Special Forces Command Airborne is the Deputy Commanding General, Brigadier General Lawrence Gill Ferguson, and the Command Senior Enlisted, Command Sergeant Major Ted Munter. Representing the United States Army John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Center and School is the Commanding General, Brigadier General Will Beaupair, and the Command Senior Enlisted, Command Sergeant Major Lee Strong. Representing the Army Special Operations Aviation Command is Commanding Officer Brigadier General Philip Ryan, and representing the Command Senior Enlisted, Command Sergeant Major Robert Armstrong. Representing the 75th Ranger Regiment is Lieutenant Colonel Harry Centeno, and representing the Regimental Command Senior Enlisted, Sergeant Major Christopher Masters. And representing the United States Army Special Operations Command is the Commanding General, Lieutenant General Jonathan Braga, and the Command Senior Enlisted, Command Sergeant Major Joanne Nauman.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the plane of taps. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in a moment of silence in honor of all fallen Special Operations soldiers and all those who have fallen in service to our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored that you could join us today for this most important gathering. We have reserved this period of time for the Gold Star families to share in honoring and remembering our fallen heroes. Please feel free to visit the wall to view and touch your loved one's name, and then, if you desire, you may leave a rose in remembrance. Again, we are most pleased that you could join us this morning. Thank you and good day.